gente se um menino como esse aqui, ó, se prepara com arroz e ovo. Você acha que tem superação no futebol? Você é fã do Cristiano Ronaldo? Eu sou fã desse garoto aqui, ó, porque esse garoto se tornou profissional com arroz e ovo. The story of Ramon Dino is the story of a young man who started from nothing. A boy who went from training on the streets of one of the poorest towns in Brazil to stepping on the stage of Mr. Olympia. Today, there are already many who say that Ramon Dino's genetics will be the only one capable of dethroning Chris Bumstead's reign. However, Ramon's path to reach the stage of Mr. Olympia has not been an easy path. It has been a path of comings and goings, a path marked by the low resources he had in his hometown, in Acre, Brazil, but also marked by those people who trusted in his genetics and his ability to sacrifice. Now we had the pleasure of seeing, on one of the biggest stages in the world, the Arnold Classic, a trained physique, mature, able to measure himself against the best, to become one of them. Ramon Dino's physique is already going around the world, but do you know all the history behind it? Do you know the whole story behind one of the best genetics ever seen in classic physique? Let's find out. Ramon Rocha Querios was born in Acre, Brazil. He was interested in the world of bodybuilding from a very young age, and here, at this point, is where the real story of Ramon Dino begins, from nothing, training in the only way he could do it, which was in the street. Fui para a praça porque eu gostava de, de praticar musculação, mas não tinha dinheiro, porque o pai não tinha condições de bancar uma academia. Não tinha condições nem de fazer as coisas direito dentro de casa, não vai bancar a academia para mim. Mas aí como eu já tinha um conhecimento mais ou menos de como eu poderia fazer, comecei a iniciar na praça, uns 15 anos. Gostava muito de praticar calistenia, me inspirava bastante ver a molecada lá que me olhava e falava, porra, o cara é desse tamanho e pratica calistenia. E ficava me perguntando, como assim e tal, desse tamanho? Eu sou do... Dino, at that time, was already showing evidence of overprivileged genetics. Ramon Dino was very young when he entered his first competitions, but not yet as a classic physique. Ramon Dino had a stage in his beginnings as a men's physique where he already showed the privileged genetics with which he came into the world. Uma época, o meu primeiro coach, Márcio Garcia, me encontrou lá na praça e me fez o convite. Daí pra frente, essa história todo mundo já sabe, né? Competi a primeira vez, ganhamos, fui pra outra competição, ganhamos novamente. Although he was able to gain experience with his first competitions in men's physique, economic problems slowed Ramon Dino in his career to reach his potential. His hometown of Aker was too small for him, sponsors were not coming, but he believed that if he won a competition, this would change radically and the money would start coming in. And you know how this works, that with the arrival of money, the physique implodes. However, there is one detail in this period that shows the true star that Ramon possesses. Everything was against him. Nobody could think that. A kid from Acre with no resources would be able to get the strength to stand up on a professional bodybuilding stage. And Ramon did it the only way he could do it. He did his training by eating only rice as his carbohydrate and eggs as his only source of protein for all the days of training. In a world overrun with advertising messages coming to us through influencers recommending us to eat 13 meals a day by consuming seven different types of supplements, of course, Ramon came along and with pure rice and eggs he made the preparation that would take him to the top. É bizarro, cara. Isso me dá, um, sabe, me dá, me dá até a tristeza. O, o Ramon comia arroz e salsicha na casa dele, cara. Arroz e ovo. Menino puro de tudo. Não tem nada. Ele ganhou o Mr. Olympia Amador comendo. Carbo alto, arroz e ovo. Carbo baixo, arroz e ovo. Ele fez 50 dias de arroz e ovo. A única proteína dele era ovo. O único carbo dele era arroz. Se tem alguém que representa a maioria dos brasileiros que sonham um dia em ser um atleta de fisiculturismo, esse alguém é o Ramon. E não, make no mistake. We all know what it takes and what is behind a real bodybuilding preparation. However, there is no doubt that there are ways and ways to carry it out and here the raw material and substances play the key role. However, Ramon's diet using the most basic foods demonstrates the low resources he had in that preparation, playing here his genetics the fundamental and key role that led him to the next episode of his life. Ramon Dino was aware of the impetuous need to win a championship of a higher level, let alone become a professional. So, in the year of the war, and in which Ramon Dino entered the Arnold Amateur in Brazil, and guess what happened? Plata. Sick, thicker than 
most of these tricks I got my mind on making money But you stuck on these fake bitches I stay blunted and never fronted And I doubt if I do Cause if I did then I'd get beat up by my fucking crew A real nigga since you figure that you ready to box You catching knots from my nigga Freddy Fox uh, You really don't want none for pockets I'll be strapped with a clock And throw things like I'm born to box I hit this motherfucking gin and I'll be all in Hell yeah, young nigga straight ballin' And everybody wants to see it from a G Weighing 165 And I'm high till I fucking die Thug life in this motherfucker catching wreck Big stretch hit me off when I hit the set But now I'm cool cause I'm tipsy and I feel a Nigga trying to see it from my uh -oh. killer Batalhamos pra caramba pra chegar aqui, eu vim de muito longe, gente, muito longe, passando dificuldade. Não que nenhum aqui passe, mas eu sei que cada um tem a sua batalha do dia a dia, mas essa foi a minha, mano, e tá aqui, ó. De onde que você veio, Ramon Carioca? Vim de Rio Branco, Acre. O Acre existe, galera. After winning the amateur Mr. Olympia and thus turning professional, Ramon Dino admitted that this was not what changed his life. Although he could already consider himself a professional, he himself acknowledged that after that victory, he still did not have the necessary resources to be able to dedicate himself exclusively to bodybuilding. What would radically change his sporting career and his life would be something else that could not be expected. Nessas vidas, o pessoal da minha cidade sempre me apoiou, mas só que não é, não era tudo que eu precisava, entendeu? Faltava muita coisa. Só que lá não não girava dinheiro para mim, eu não tava ganhando dinheiro com isso, entendeu? Não tinha patrocinadores fortes. Precisa ser visto, tu aqui no Acre não tem como ser visto, mano. Competir para cá para fora, o Olímpia, achei que minha vida iria mudar, né? Não mudou muito. <risos> Fui visto, mas não mudou, não mudou muito. Aí apareceu o Toguro, o Toguro fez o convite para mim para a mansão. Obrigado, Toguro, sou grato, viu? E desde então minha vida vem dando um, uma baita mudança. Aí conheci o Horse. Toguro, Tiago Toguro. This person is a big part of the history of Ramondino. Nobody knew him, but his physique was able to impress everyone. That was why this person, Tiago Toguro, you can say a fitness influencer who has more than 4 million followers on Instagram, invited him to his Maromba Mansion project, which to sum it up very simply, is a mansion full of fitness influencers who were basically dedicated to creating content. No doubt this was a turning point in Ramon Dino's life. Now he could have a diet, much better supplementation, and he could also grow his social networks. And so it was, Ramon Dino's appearance on Toguru's channel with millions of followers made the story we have been telling inspire thousands. For the first time, he had the means to take off. However, this Maromba Mansion, was arguably not the best place for a bodybuilding athlete. And it was here that the role of the person who accompanies her to this day, Renato Cariani, came in a bodybuilding enthusiast and one of the most influential people in the fitness world in Brazil. Os investimentos dela são para outras outras coisas, né? Nunca o esporte, porque lá é muito parado, lá ninguém ajuda ninguém. Falar Você com ele. fez toda a sua preparação com arroz e ovo. Arroz e ovo, era o que tinha. Arroz e ovo. Era o que dava, era. Arroz e ovo, cara. Chegou hora que enjoa, não enjoa não, pô? Meu Deus, mas fazer o que só tem isso, né? Não posso parar, né? Era o que tinha. Eu disse para você, uma vez numa conversa particular, que eu tenho um sonho. Um sonho no bodybuilding, um sonho no esporte, que ainda vou realizar. Você, garoto, merece uma oportunidade. E eu vou te ajudar sim. Eu vou te ajudar. Vou deixar. Vou deixar. Vou deixar. Fica tranquilo. Eu vou te ajudar. Mas por dois motivos. Primeiro, porque você é merecedor. Porque um cara ser campeão do Mr. Olímpia com arroz e ovo na sua preparação inteira, três, quatro meses comendo arroz e ovo, é muito, mas Tem é muito merecedor. Especial. Sem nada. Arroz e ovo, segundo, porque o Brasil precisa de atletas como você. O Brasil precisa de uma representação à altura no bodybuilding. 25 anos de idade, um atleta profissional que poderia, com um pouco de investimento, eu não tô falando muita coisa não, tô falando dar um carro para ele, não, não. Dá uma alimentação adequada, da tecnologia adequada, pelo menos a metade do que os pró-fera dos Estados Unidos têm. Porque ele tem o dobro da genética dos caras. Dá uma oportunidade para ele, para ele representar o Brasil. A gente torce de 4 em 4 anos para os brasileiros ganharem uma Copa do Mundo. Por que a gente não pode torcer 
para um atleta de outra modalidade. Por que o fisiculturismo não pode ser o futebol para a gente se um menino como esse aqui ó, se prepara com arroz e ovo? Você acha que tem superação no futebol? Você é fã do Cristiano Ronaldo? Eu sou. Você é fã de Neymar e Companhia Limitada? Eu sou fã desse garoto aqui, ó. Porque esse garoto se tornou profissional com arroz e ovo. Se os Estados Unidos têm bons representantes, é porque eles acreditam nos atletas com potencial. Porque se a gente acreditasse, nossa genética é muito melhor do que a deles. Garoto, eu vou te ajudar. Eu muito tenho um projeto para você. Fica tranquilo, a gente vai conversar. E vocês vão acompanhando isso. Toguro, você <risos> é foda. Um olheiro Merece. danado, um olheiro danado. Encontrou mais uma pérola do fisiculturismo. Mas... É o Brasil do fisiculturismo, meu amigo. E aquela pose do Arnold? Seu é Brasil no fisiculturismo também. O, o Ramon comia arroz e salsicha na casa dele, cara. É o básico de treinar e de não desistir das condições que a gente tem, que são as melhores. Ninguém sabia quem ele era. O pai do Ramon mora numa casa de palafita. E o Ramon é quem hoje, graças a Deus, consegue ajudar o pai. Então eu tô torcendo muito pro Ramon. É o meu país, são os nossos representantes, são as nossas histórias. The Europa Pro was a surprise for many. The clear candidate to win it was Madelman, who was playing at home and was already qualified for the Mr. Olympia. But as circumstances would have it, a deputy who was competing for the first time as a pro to compete against the Spaniard and Fabian Meyer in the top three. In that competition, two direct passes for the Mr. Olympia would come out. Caralho, tô mais nervoso que se eu tivesse competindo, mano. Olha, bem quieto, não para. Tá vermelho já. É, me segurar ainda, tá muito cedo ainda pra me emocionar. É muito amor, é, é realmente que nem um filho. É algo muito intenso. And soon Ramon Dino entered that top three, showing the world a very proportionate structure, very aesthetic, with very dominant arms and perhaps it was not the most mature physique and with the most pronounced insertions, especially if we compare it with that of Madelman. But you could get to see the genetics with a potential we still don't know his. Então eles estão assim, primeiro, segundo e terceiro, tá? Agora eles vão confrontar vocês três. É o confronto mais importante. Tu precisa lutar com mais do que nunca agora, tá? Eu vou pegar o rolinho ali, a gente vai arrumar. Chega mais perto dele, Ramon! Chega mais perto! Ramon, mais perto dele! Yes. 
is about made out. The check for $1,000. And the ticket to the big stage, Joe Wiggins Olympia in Orlando. You may take it too. Brazil, Ramon Rocha Carlos. Ramon could not be aware of how much that professional debut was going to change his life. His name was already beginning to be heard and was starting to be taken into account. He had left everything behind to fulfill a dream and that second place was the sign that he was really achieving it. And how could it be otherwise? The first people Ramon remembered were those who gave him everything, his first fans and those who had seen him being born. Então, estamos aqui no bairro Alto Alegre, Rio Branco no Acre. Vou mostrar para vocês onde morava o dinossauro Ramon. Que era o lugarzinho que ele ficava fazendo as poses para me mandar. Qual a mensagem que o senhor quer que eu mandar para o seu filho hoje? Que ele continue firme, não desista. Ele sabe que o pai dele nunca desistiu de nada. Faça por ele, filho. Faça pela sua família. Lute por eles. Eu acho que você representa centenas de milhares de pessoas espalhadas pelo Brasil que só queriam uma oportunidade. Uma oportunidade para mudar a vida, uma oportunidade para mudar o destino da sua família, de poder ajudar eles de alguma forma, porque ninguém olha por ninguém. A única pessoa que pode olhar pelo seu pai é você, filho. Mas ninguém, não tem governo, não tem assistência social, não tem nada. Então toda vez que você descer para aquele ginásio de academia para fazer um treino, filho, lembra dele. Lembra de tudo que ele te ensinou. Lembra de tanto que você passou e de tudo que você teve de dificuldade para chegar até aqui. To this important moment in Ramon's life where he was already qualified for the Mr. Olympia, we must add of the most important news that a man can receive in his life, which is the birth of a son. Ramon that same year and just before the Mr. Olympia would see the birth of his son, and for those who do not know, his wife had met her no more and no less than at the Maromba mansion, the place that gave him. The doors to stardom would also be the cradle of a love that soon after would turn him into a father. Although it is true that it did not take long for the comments to come out that this news would put Ramon off his professional aspirations, all Ramon could say was that now he had a much greater motive to fight for all his dreams. But now we were approaching the most important event in fitness. It was time to take his place alongside the best, to really see what his potential was. For the first time, he would be judged alongside world champions and aspiring champions. Ramon was named at the first call and to the surprise of many, his physique didn't look out of place at all. In his face one could see the illusion of a child who was battling the, the ambition of a man who knows his full potential. He was rotated with Fabian Mir who had placed first in the Europa Pro. This undoubtedly ignited the atmosphere and made palpable what that a couple of years ago seemed unattainable.
And of course, he also had the opportunity to pose next to the champion of champions Chris Bamstead, of which we have already spoken extensively in a documentary on this channel, and you can take a look at it. But that moment allowed Ramon to measure himself with the real elite. And to the surprise of so many, he was not far away at all. A moment that is already classic physique history and that will surely be repeated at the next Mr. Olympia. And Ramon finally made it into the top 5 and would be a permanent fixture in the finals. Escuchando un techno que me hacía empujarla como un animal Música del infierno que suena en el día de mi funeral Aún me acuerdo de ti Demasiadas mujeres 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 After this Ramon returned to his homeland as a true idol. He had managed to inspire thousands and thousands of people in Brazil. But the job was not done yet. The top 5 did not guarantee Ramon a place in the next year's Mr. Olympia, so Ramon would have to go out again to a professional championship. He and Renato Cariani made the decision to go out and compete on home soil with all their people in the professional championship in Brazil. <laughs> In the Marcel Contes of Brazil, we could see an absolutely epic battle. Two idols for the Brazilian fans fought against each other. Gabriel Zancanelli showed a very good condition on stage and slightly superior to Ramon, which gave even more battle. Cette fois c'était la dernière Tu peux croire que c'est qu'une crise Mate une dernière fois mon derrière Il est à côté de mes valises And the brutal presence of Ramon 
ended up deciding the championship and confirming one more year his participation in the Mr. Olympia. In December last year, we are approaching the end of Ramon Dino's career and there could not be a better outcome to this story than what happened at the Arnold Classic in Ohio. This was undoubtedly the most important event of the year after the Mr. Olympia. Why? Because our dear Arnold wanted to give all the importance it deserves to this championship in classic physique and put a good cash prize. The Arnold was attended by no more and no less than all the top five of the Mr. Olympia with the exception of Chris Bamster, which means that this is where the person who would probably come from, who would battle face to face with Chris Bamster. And here it must be said that Ramon, following what had happened in last year's Mr. Olympia, was the least favorite of them all, but the meteoric rise that Ramon was experiencing could not stop. Ramon managed the second place ahead of Urs and Brian Ansley. This championship tells us that things are changing. Ramon Dino had beaten a two-time champion like Brian, which put him in a very favorable position for the Mr. Olympia of position for last year's Mr. Olympia, so much so that people are starting to talk that the only one who can beat King Chris Bamster is the genetics of Brazilian Ramon. Isso aqui é nosso, galera. Isso aqui é nosso. Ó. Todos vocês aqui também que estão aqui comigo, torcendo pela gente. E eu vou sempre dar o meu melhor, porque é isso daqui que a gente busca. Né? E eu tenho certeza que da próxima vez a gente vai ter um lugar bem melhor. É nóis, gente. But if you thought we were going to stay there today just eight weeks after the Mr. Olympia, we are going to discover how this humble child with faith Chris Bumstead, the athlete who has lifted the whole of bodybuilding, whose story now intersects with a young Brazilian, who without barely speaking English is claiming a place in the industry, and is that in this channel we have dealt with the great rivalries of bodybuilding. We have seen the history of Arnold from the eyes of Oliva, also the version of Mike Menzer against the Austrian Oak. The history of bodybuilding has been written by its rivalries, and today we are going to find out if we are once again facing one of those great rivalries that determine the narrative of this sport. And as many of you may well know, Ramon Dino's problems in facing Chris Bumstead started long before he went on stage. Not long ago we did a video on how the weight limit in classic physique was leading to episodes in bodybuilding that had already ended in tragedy and other sports. <laughs> The weight cuts. When an athlete has already reached enough muscle mass to be at his weight limit, the only thing left to do is to play with dehydration in the setups to improve year after year. Well, Ramon Dino, along with other bodybuilders like Madelman, Ruff Diesel or Peter Molna, are among those who have had to be playing competition after competition with the feared number on the scales. <sighs> These pre-Alicante Pro images are nothing more or less than ways to dehydrate the body. Put it at high temperatures to leave with completely dry skin, but above all, to comply with the size of a federation. 
a federation that has been forced to extend the weight limit that we previously criticized. This new measure comes this year, but that did not free Ramon Dino that in the same way that in the Alicante Pro also had to resort to these extreme situations in the very Mr. Olympia. While Chris Bumstead came out confident and calm for having given the weight that allowed him to reach that level of size that had encompassed all competitors in previous years. Ramon Dino and Ruff Diesel were forced to undergo these practices again. Specifically, Ramon Dino, as his partner Horse reported that same day of the Mr. Olympia, and totally against the clock, they had to go up to his room to expose Ramon Dino's body to very high temperatures again. On the verge of fainting and with his mind totally clouded, Ramon would appear on the scene with a cadaverous face, looking as if he had experienced something that other competitors did not have to face. However, Ramon was able to finish making the weight and thus make the load that would fill him with glycogen to show the world a much improved physique compared to last year. A physique that was no longer that of a top 5. A physique that made him go from being a promise to being a reality. A reality that would face one on one against Chris Bumstead. <laughs> And it is in this individual presentation where we see a classic physique that arrives in an almost pristine physical condition. Very good condition, a more loaded physique compared to last year, improvements in the back and in the back chain very noticeable. In short, the ceiling wax boy had arrived here to do battle. We were not simply in front of a product born of Brazilian propaganda, but Ramon's physique really had something that made him stand out among that lineup where the best physiques of today were. And after a whole year where we had to settle for a few seconds of comparison between the current champion and the Brazilian sensation, now we see a gesture of Chris Bumstead towards him being aware that Ramon Dino will be his main rival. So much so that from a previous top 5, this year we would have a direct comparison between the champion and Ramon Dino. And after much speculation, Ramon Dino and Chris Bumstead leave us with a battle that gave life to that Mr. Olympia. And we've already talked about Ramon, but here the news was that Chris Bumstead came out in a plethoric state as well. He didn't fail in the setup. He didn't fail in his condition. His glute came in straighted and his leg in the side poses seemed to have completely mutated. The difference in size was still noticeable this year, but this does not detract from the feat of Ramon Dino, who knowing all the history and all the background that is in his life journey to reach that stage makes us understand why all this euphoria. Gente, primeiramente, deixa eu me ajudar aqui. But now the good result of the bridal gym had to be demonstrated by Ramon in the finals and this would be on a big stage the dream of any bodybuilder. In just one year Ramon went from being a fifth place finisher to making history at the Arnold Classic, achieving a second place finish. But what the world couldn't imagine was that this was just the beginning because from being a complete unknown he was now being called to go head to head with Chris Bumstead. 
And now there could only be one left. The next name to be named would be the champion of Mr. Olympia. And we'll now announce the winner of our 2022 Classic Physique Olympia. Gentlemen, please take the first place award, the Olympia Gold Medal, the check for $50,000, and the title of 2022 Classic Physique Olympia champion to our winner, Brazilian genetics would not be enough to dethrone the seemingly invincible Chris Bumstead. However, here is a detail that I think it is curious to note, and that is the late reaction of Ramon Dino. We must remember that he does not know English, something that prevents him from communicating with the rest of the bodybuilders. But not only that, but also to understand them. And I don't know about you, but I have the feeling that in that scenario, the last one to find out who the winner really was, was precisely Ramon Dino. I think his delayed reaction was because he didn't catch Bob's words. If he really didn't know if they were referring to him or Chris Bumstead, that's why he had to look to one side and to the other, only to realize a few seconds later that he was not the winner, that he had come in second place. But we do not see an annoyed or angry reaction, but rather some genuine joy for Chris Bumstead. What's more, Ramon Dino celebrates that second place more than anyone else. He shows an attitude of gratitude for all that he was experiencing and in the end realizing what was a fair result. In what would probably be Chris Bumstead's best performance at a Mr. Olympia. A physique that brought more size than ever, that came with more cuts and more conditioning than we had ever seen before and in short, a sebum that would make it clear for another year who was king. And this condition of runner-up leads Ramondino to the second most important event of the year, the Arnold Classic. A championship with as much relevance as the previous one, because we are talking about that year in Ohio, we're going to be the best classic physique in the world. Ramon Dino would have to prove if the Mr. Olympia had been a mere coincidence, or if on the contrary, the Brazilian was really established as the top two of this industry. But the Arnold was not just any championship. The symbolic component of going to the event hosted by the most iconic bodybuilder of all time. None other than Arnold Schwarzenegger gave Ramon Dino an unmatched motivation. So much so that Renato Cariani could not contain his excitement at seeing what was a child living a dream. O que será que está passando na cabeça dele, Renato? Cara, ele é só um menino. Sim, existem dois Ramon. Ramon que todo mundo conhece. Esse atleta implacável, colecionador de títulos, né? Você pega o Ramon, cara, o Ramon não conhece a palavra derrota ainda, cara. É um negócio absurdo. Você falar que você foi top 5 na estreia do Olímpico, isso não é uma derrota, isso é uma vitória. O Ramon é um atleta que não sabe ainda o que é a derrota. E você conhece um outro Ramon, que é o Ramon que eu conheço. Que às vezes a galera me critica, tudo, mas não consegue entender. Que eu vejo um outro Ramon. O Ramon é um menino pra mim, entendeu? Eu tenho um carinho por ele, pelo gnomo, de filho. Não adianta. Há menos de dois anos atrás eu morava no Acre. E agora ele está competindo no principal evento. No principal não, mas no segundo principal evento do planeta. E competindo com os gringos falando em top 3, top 4, ou seja, colocando ele até como uma ameaça, porque na estreia dele no Mr. Olympia eu sonhava com top 10, e aí eu vi esse garoto se tornar top 5, esse garoto quase me infartou, agora cara, eu já sonho alto. O que, que aconteceu, Ramon? O uhum. que, que aconteceu? Caiu um cisco aqui. Caiu um cisco no seu olho? Aham. Um sonho realizado. Eu sei que é só uma estátua, né? Pra muitos é só uma estátua, mas pra quem acompanhou a história desse cara, a história que ele fez e o que ele motiva, cara, é muito louco. Eu nunca imaginei que um dia eu chegaria aqui. Olha só onde é que a gente tá, mano. Muito louco. Emociona. Olha isso aqui, ó. Olha o que está no braço do papai Ana. Isso aqui é um presente para você, filho, que eu trouxe. Eu não sei se você conhece, 
um pouco de mitologia grega, mas existe uma história na mitologia grega de Zeus. Zeus foi o deus dos deuses, o maior deus de todos. E Zeus ele tinha um escudo, um escudo que protegia ele e dava força. Esse escudo era um dos principais responsáveis por fazer de Zeus o deus mais poderoso, porque ele guerreava com os outros deuses. E ele vencia através desse escudo, que trazia força e proteção. Esse aqui, ó, é o escudo de Zeus, chamado Égide. Esse escudo de Zeus se chamava Égide. Então eu quero te presentear, filho, nessa reta final, com o Égide, que é o escudo protetor de Zeus. E eu vou te fazer um pedido. Só tira esse escudo do peito na hora de subir no palco. Eu tenho fé de que da mesma forma que esse escudo fez de Zeus o deus dos deuses, o Égide, o Égide vai trazer a proteção que você precisa nessa reta final. Então que você tenha a proteção de Égide, a força de Égide, para que os seus treinos sejam os treinos mais fortes de toda a tua história. E que esses treinos, com a força de Égide, leve você um passo à frente dessa competição. Obrigado, Eu estou muito feliz de estar aqui com você. Eu, eu não pude estar contigo no Mister Olímpia e eu sofri muito de longe, mas hoje eu estou aqui com você. Nesse segundo... Nessa sua segunda batalha é tão dura. Vai dar certo, meu filho. Vai dar certo. Já deu, né? Tá bom. Já deu. Já. Muito obrigado, pai. Caramba, velho. Papai Arnold, eu sou a nossa. É só um garoto que veio do Acre com um sonho. O um sonho de fazer história no fisiculturismo. O um sonho de quase todas as pessoas que competem. É o um sonho de muitos garotos, de muitas garotas que acompanha o esporte de um dia ser referência. Você é referência já. Você já é referência. Que Papai Arnold vai abençoar. Vai dar tudo certo. And with that image paying homage to Arnold and doing his favorite classic pose, Ramon Dino stands in the Arnold of Ohio, not simply to pay homage to Arnold, but he was one of the main candidates to take the title. And even lamenting the absence of Ruth Diesel, Urs and Ramon Dino were already beginning to be talked about as a reality, the only classic physique with enough line to come close to Chris Bamstead. But now the question was between the two of them, who would be the real contender to be the classic physique of the future? <laughs> Undoubtedly, this is a key battle that marks part of the future of the category. Two different aesthetics, but in tune with the essence of the classic physique criteria. Bravo! However, that day Ramon Dino presented a physical condition that Urs could do nothing about. Place the war, the second place Chuck. You want to run her up this evening? Urs, tell us this evening! Hey! 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 And after all the images we have seen, imagine for a moment how Ramon Dino must have felt when he realized that he would be presented with the award by the man he admired. Ramon Dino would go from prostrating himself in front of his statue to directly being able to repeat that classic pose, but with the real life Arnold. And that is why Ramon Dino does not hesitate to make the following gesture. <laughs> In an attempt to replicate the photograph with Arnold, the latter ignores him, without knowing very well the reasons, perhaps lack of understanding or indifference. 
But here, the real act of sportsmanship was in his Latin American compatriot, Alex Cambronero. Knowing that Ramon Dino had not been in a good place, he decided to put everyone in agreement so that if it was not Arnold, it would be his teammates with whom he would have this snapshot. Ravi, meu filho! Ei, papai! Ei, papai! Ô, meu filho! Aqui pra tu, ó! Meu amor, muito obrigado, meu amor, recado. Muito obrigado pela paciência, muito obrigado por acreditar em mim, muito obrigado por me aguentar, me aturar, que essas fases são as. And that's how Ramon Dino became a reality in world bodybuilding. But if there is one good thing about having come from the bottom, it is that today, retaining the same passion and dedication to bodybuilding, the newspaper archive leaves us images like this one of Ramon Dino from Brazil learning from Chris Bamstead. <laughs> Tentar até chegar ao, aos pés dele é um pouco complicado, porque ele já está bastante tempo na caminhada, mas a gente já está seguindo os mesmos caminhos, mesmo com a mesma direção. Eu preciso treinar com ele, meu amor. Se for do, do, da vontade de Deus, mano, meu Deus do céu, eu não negaria nada. <risos> Ramon Dino already had tops in the Mr. Olympia, an Arnold classic, but had not yet trained, with whom one day he said it would be an honor to learn from him. What's up, you two? <laughs> Shit's crazy, my Shit's man. Shit's crazy, my man. Shit's crazy, my man. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Yes, sir, thank you. He's three days post-show. I'm having to start my off-season, been taking a lot of time to recover, time off the gym, so we're trying not to hurt ourselves, get a good workout in. Stay tuned and hopefully you guys enjoy the workout. Right. Chris Bamstead and Ramon Dino were facing each other, but this time not on the stage as rivals, but as true training partners. Ramon Dino had competed only three days ago, which was evident in his physique, while Chris Bamstead, as we are accustomed to seeing him in his sweatshirt. But this would undoubtedly be an epic moment of this year, and a way to get closer to the relationship between the two greatest of today. These are truly enjoyable images, because from that day, we don't just take away a simple back workout. And accustomed to the rivalries of the 70s to see this companionship and above all the admiration that Ramon Dino shows towards Chris Bamstead is surprising. Surprising in a world where prioritizing the show is always a rule. The show must always go on, but in this case it is curious because it is difficult to see two rivals, one being the undisputed champion and the other not even being able to communicate easily. Both give off an image of total sportsmanship and companionship. So much so that they leave us moments like this. Damn, baby! Because <laughs> uh, he wants to give you a gift. This is a shield that he uses to protect him from injuries and everything. So he wants to give you one. Eu protejo você em toda sua caminhada. So you know, wear this and then don't get injured. This is a shield that he wears and he wants to give you one. Okay. Point nele, point nele. Mm. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a Zeus, Zeus shield. Shield of Zeus? Yeah, yeah, that protects, yeah. Skull of Zeus. Thank you.